I You've been it. ducking and dodging me for so long. John Smoltz is here, Hall of Famer, Fox broadcaster. By the way, John and I are in constant communication. I get hate texts from him every <laughs> playoff game saying, hey, a guy's pitch, a starter is in the seventh inning. Have you passed out yet? And yet I never see John. I was like, hey, come on the show. Oh, absolutely. I'll, I'll do your show anytime. Yet he hasn't done the show all year until a bullpen game just blew up in my face. <laughs> and now here you are. I think my schedule just opened up. Good to see it you. It is good to see you. Good to it's see you, good too. To be here. <laughs> all right, let me ask you this. Yeah. So, uh, just crazy, right? So, it's an elimination game, right? And it's all hands on deck. Get your A squad out early. Zach Gallen, an elite pitcher, but has struggled in the first inning. Eight of his 16 runs allowed in the postseason have been in the first inning. I know it's getting cute, but could you use an opener? Maybe Thompson, someone breathing fire, open, and then Gallon give him the bulk innings. No, no, Gallon, Gallon's your stud, and I know a lot of people are going to be talking about innings pitched this year, but this is not about innings pitched. This game's about execution. He knows how to execute. He's got five weapons to get hot hitters out, and I think you'll see tonight that he'll go back to that executing the pitches that made him special. And I think when he's not, he hasn't been as sharp. He's he has. very sharp, but he hasn't been. And lately. he will tell you that, I'm sure. And and going into a game like tonight, you don't have to be perfect. If you try to pitch perfect, that's when you get in trouble. And I think everyone knows when you're pitching an elimination game. I pitched seven of them in my career. I knew my leash was going to be short. Mm -hmm. I knew that I had to give my manager no reason to come out earlier. But you have to just go execute. I know it sounds stupid or overkill, like one pitch at a time that's it because you're yeah. not you're not given another start this is it right and when you pitch a game like this I relished it I loved it we didn't win every game that it was an elimination game but it wasn't going to be because I wasn't going to pay attention to the detail and know that I wasn't going in yeah. a typical game like I was in a regular season yeah, yeah. John's too humble but you're one of the, the best postseason pitchers in history you you dialed it up at, when it mattered most you were excellent um, starters going third time through right where are you on that there is a penalty and yet if you're watching a guy pitching well it's tempting just to let it ride but it is a somewhat emotional decision where are you yeah I think the balance of the two is somewhere that, that needs to be decided on because you're not trained to do it the regular season model works but then you got to be prepared to let a have a, let a guy have a moment you never know when he's going to have a moment. Mm -hmm. And I think Bruce Bochy has showed the balance of that in his postseason experience. I know there were a lot. Of, remember when I told you we need a WhatsApp, like an app that, that tells you what the first guessing app instead yeah. of a second guessing <laughs> okay. app? Yeah. Because the bases were loaded and, and Evaldi pitched in that game against the Houston Astros. And I know if it was a first guess app, everybody would have said Evaldi needed to come out. He got out of that because his manager trusted his stuff was still good enough. So. You bring up a good point, and we know that third time through, the numbers are undeniable. But there are moments in the mm -hmm. postseason that you have to pay attention to that are special. Go, I gotta let, I gotta let Brian Kenny have his moment, but then balance it with what I see and the information. I would just push back and say it happened. Uh, the a, a lead was given up. The runs were scored on guys like Verlander, Freddie Peralta, who has great stuff, yep. Tyler Glasnow. So I'm talking aces. Yeah. He's saying we're cruising, we're doing well. Oh, now it's three one, and that was the Adolis Garcia home run off Verlander. So it right. happens to the big guys too. Yeah, no, it does. But but I think when you you have this sense of time in a best of seven. If you go to that every single time, your relievers are going to pay the price to that. Well, but now, but you're here. Let's say right. you're here. And like, man, no, this is let it sprint. It will never. Right. It will not happen in this game. Correct. Right. Okay. Um, do you walk Corey Seager? Yes. Did it, last night, did you think they should have walked him? I, I know that was the, probably the game plan. They didn't execute the pitches around the zone. I think you know when you when you're facing a hot hitter, okay. Now, you trust your pitchers, and then if it doesn't get done, then you take it out of the hands of the pitchers. But that pitch was not a very good pitch. Were you saying that on the air? I'm sorry, I was watching on a monitor. I couldn't hear you. I, I think the biggest thing is with, with Seager is you know that he is an aggressive hitter. And the fact that the Rangers are here is because they don't chase. Even though he's aggressive, you have to make great pitches. They got him out in the middle of this postseason. The latter part of the postseason, he hasn't missed a mistake. Mm -hmm. So now tonight, he may not get a chance to hit too many too many times. Should Bruce Bochy have used Jose Leclerc last night? Yes. And, really? I, and I'll, I'll tell you why. I said in the game last night that I thought that the Arizona Diamondbacks game plan was small victory, small victory, small victory. When you're down 10 nothing, your small victories is get as many guys in the game as you can. The more looks we get it, it'll help us the longer we go in the series. And once they did that, they got seven runs. Then Bruce Bochy said, I don't want the guys at the plate to start feeling any better and get more confidence. I need to end it now. Even though it was in a, in a, a well, you know, lead 
I think I've heard another manager surprise me a long time ago. He go, I go, why did you put your closer in that game when it was well in hand? He goes, I didn't want them to start feeling confident going into tomorrow. In other words, I want to go in. I don't want Brian Kennedy to get a hit. I don't want the next guy to get a hit. I want to end it right now. It was at the most going to be two to three batters. So when you have a lead of three to one, mm. you can do those kind of things knowing that it's not an emergency game winning game five. Right. I, I like how you invoke my name to win me over to your side. Like if I see a, a big hitter like Brian Kenny, then I'm, I'm like, oh, well, John, you're making an awful lot of sense. <laughs> I know what you're doing. How often, uh, do, oh, let me just bring this up. Uh, elimination game. This year alone, John, I had to get to my notes. Yeah. Dave Roberts, who was like state of the art manager, Lance Lynn gives up four solo home runs. Dusty Baker, going to be a Hall of Fame manager. He held Hector Neris and Brian Abreu and Ryan Presley in abeyance until they're down 8 2. Tanner Scott, Pete Fairbanks, good closers on good teams, yeah. barely used, and their teams were eliminated. When do we get to a point where we move those eighth, seventh, eighth, and ninth inning guys into the third and fourth? Because you can lose in the third and fourth in these games. That's a better chance today than in some of those games you talked about. Dave Roberts, they're down. Two those were games. elimination games. They were. Yeah. They were down two games to none, having to win, have to win three in a row. It's different. And the same scenario here, when you get to the end of the rope in the World Series, mm -hmm. it certainly plays out a little bit more and the magnif it's, it's magnified more. So I think for Zach Gallen and for the Arizona Diamondbacks, they have the arms to win three in a row, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But they're going to have to be really, really good. And then those high leverage guys that have been waiting to come in, they're going to come in. And they're going to come in. Early. Are you going to talk bullpenning tonight? You're going to talk a little like, hey, bullpenning, this is the future. This is where we're going. I talked so much <laughs> bullpenning last night. <laughs> no, it's, you know, isn't it strange, though, we get to game four and both teams had to use that version. You know, oh, you've know, different where, I know where we're going. Yeah. And it, it, it wasn't long ago. We were working together like eight, ten years ago where it was a, they don't have a game four starter. Like everybody, like good teams had a yeah. game four starter. Now even teams paying two hundred million dollars don't yeah. have that. They're not but you out know there. what's amazing about this this postseason? Besides the unexpected teams that we thought, these are two good teams, and, and they grabbed here in different ways. Great defense, don't strike out a lot, mm -hmm. and they do the little things that make the difference at this. Time execute, of the year. yep, they execute. They do. John, good seeing, Great you, seeing you. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. It won't be the last time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, the next time an opener gets crushed. Hey, you have any? Oh, come on, Joe. It turns out I don't feel like playing golf today. Thank you, John. Have a good call tonight. Thank you. Enjoy it. Great.